A month ago, I reviewed the film Mad Max. Now let's talk about its sequel, Mad Max 2, or better known in the U.S. as The Road Warrior. Bad days, entertainment ratings and reviews. So greens, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Dual, better known to you as the Big D, and this time around I bring to you a review of the 1981 post-apocalyptic dystopian action flick Mad Max 2, a.k.a. The Road Warrior. Originally released by Warner Brothers, distributed by Roadshow Film Distributors, and produced by Candy Miller Entertainment. <clears throat> Directed by George Miller, who co-wrote with Terry Hayes and Brian Hammond. It's the second installment of the Mad Max franchise. The film starts Mel Gibson reprising his role as Mad Max Rakatansky and follows a hard man who helps a community of sellers defend themselves against a roving band of marauders. The film was released on Christmas Eve this of 1981 in Australia, that is. It soon got followed by releasing, e well, by game released in the U.S. But anyway, just like its predecessor, it got a lot of good responses, what have you. And I couldn't agree more. I have to say, this is really, really something that I finally took the time to watch it after finally watching the first film. And this film is pretty intense and what have you. Now, before I get started, if you haven't seen my review of the first Mad Max, click on that card and it'll take you to my review for that film, just in case you might miss it, or if you would like to see it again, because I will be reviewing the next two Mad Max films in the next couple of days. <clears throat> okay, let's get the story started. After a global war resulted in widespread oil shortages and ecocide, civilization collapsed, and the world descended into barbarism. Now, former policeman Max Rokotansky is haunted by the death of his family and drives his supercharged Black VA Pursuit Special around the desert wilderness of Australia scavenging for food and petrol with his Australian cow dog. He outmaneuvers a small group of marauders led by the unhinged biker Wes using his driving skills and a sawed-off shotgun. He steals some gasoline from the wrecked vehicles over one of his pursuers and inspects a wrecked semi-trailer and prime mover. Later, Max tries to collect an and apparently abandoned gyrocopter steel, but is ambushed by the pilot. Max overpowers the man with his dog's help, sparing his life in return for being led to a working oil refinery the pilot has discovered. They arrive during the daily attack on the facility by a Molly Morirai's gang, whose members include Wes. <coughs> 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 Sorry, everyone. The next day, Max witnesses several cars leave the besieged compound and get chased down by marauders. He rescues Nathan, the sole survivor of one car, and tries to deal with, well, to return him to the complex in exchange for fuel. But the man dies shortly after Max gets him back. And the leader of the sellers, Papagallo, says the deal died with Nathan. The settlers are about to confiscate Max's car and cast him out of their compound when the marauders return to negotiate. A feral child who lives in the refinery compound kills Wes's partner with a male boomerang and Wes wants revenge. But the gang's leader, a muscular masked man called Lord Humongous, offers to spare the settlers' lives in exchange for their fuel supply and leaves for the day. However, the settlers are divided over whether or not they can trust Humongous. Max offers his own deal. He will bring them the semi-truck he saw earlier so they can try to haul away their tanker full of oil. If they return his car and give him as much fuel as he can carry, the sellers agree and that night Max sneaks past the marauders on foot carrying fuel for the truck. He encounters the gyro captain and forces him to fly him to the truck, which he is able to get started. He is somewhat damaged as Max passes through the marauders' encampment 
on his way back to the refinery, but he makes it fall by the gyro company. Max refuses Papagallo's intrigue to accompany the settlers to a fabled door in paradise, opting instead to collect his fuel and leave. <clears throat> Wes catches him using Humongous's nitrous oxide equipped vehicle and causes him to crash. A marauder kills Max's dog and is about to kill the seriously injured Max when a marauder named Toei attempts to siphon the fuel from the pursuit special's tanks, triggering the car to self destruct. Left for dead, Max is rescued by the gyro captain and returned to the compound. During his injuries, Max insists on driving the repair truck during the escape. His support consists of the gyro captain, Papagallo, in a separate vehicle, three of the sailors on the outside of the armored tanker, and the feral kid, who jumps on the truck as it is leaving. The marauders pursue the tanker, allowing the remaining sailors to flee their compound in a caravan of smaller vehicles as they're rigging the refinery to explode. Now for the ending. You know the procedure. If I send this out this video, go to the description box below. Fast forward to the time below as I'm now timed out. If you've seen this movie already, please continue. Okay, you've been warned. Papa Gallo and the three sellers are killed and the gyro captain is shot down. Max turns the truck around and as he is fighting with Wes, Humongous collides with the truck head on, killing Wes and himself. The truck rolls off the road and the surviving marauders survey the scene only to abandon their chase when they see the tanker leaking sand and not gas. <coughs> <coughs> As Max carries the feral kid from the wrecked tanker, he inspects the sand pouring out. The gyro captain drives up, and the two share a grin as Max realizes the tanker had been a diversion the whole time. They rendezvous with the sailors who transport the fuel and oil drums inside their vehicles. The gyro captain succeeds Papa Gallo as their leader of the sailors, and takes them north. The feral kid, revealing himself as the film's narrator, relates that he became the chief of the Great Northern Tribe when he grew up. He concludes by saying that he never saw the Road Warrior again. End of story. <coughs> so what did I think of the Road Warrior? Well, or should I say Mad Max 2? It answers the ear name. I really thought this was a good sequel. And I agree with what they're saying. It's been widely hailed as both one of the greatest action movies of all time and one of the greatest sequels ever made. And fan clubs for the film and Road Warrior theme activities continue into the 21st century for this. Anyway, it was a big success, making $36 million in U.S. rentals. Anyway... And its post-apocalyptic and punk aesthetics helped popularize the genre in film and action writing. At the 10th Annual Saturn Awards, the film won Best International Film and was nominated for five more. Best Director, Best Actor for Gibson, Best Supporting Actor for Bruce Spence, Best Writing, and Best Costume. <laughs> it made $10 million in Australia alone which was double what its predecessor had done in the country, become the highest grossing Australian film at the Australian box office. Now, now the film didn't get released in the U.S. until 1980, because it did not receive a proper release from its distributor, American International, who released its predecessor. <coughs> as the company was in the final stages of a change of ownership after being bought by film rights. A year earlier, and its box office was affected, Warner Bros. decided to release it, but recognizing the first film was not well known to North, in North America, although it was becoming more popular through cable channel shows, they decided to change the name of the sequel to The Road Warrior. The advertising for the film, including print ads, trailers, and TV commercials, did not refer to the Max character at all and shied away from the fact that the film was a sequel. For the majority of American viewers, their first inkling of The Road Warrior being a sequel to Mad Max was when they saw the black and white archival footage from the first film during the prologue of the second. When Vestron Video later released Mad Max on home video, they capitalized by labeling it the thrilling predecessor to the Road Warrior.
for its reviews, the film sets certified fresh at 93% on Rotten Tomatoes, saying that this is everything a bigger budget Mad Max sequel should be bigger, faster, louder, but definitely not dumber. It has a rating of 77 on Metacritic. Roger Ebert praised the film for its skillful filmmaking and called it a film of pure action and kinetic energy, which is one of the most relentlessly aggressive movies ever made. He pointed out the film does not develop its vision of a violent future world with characters and dialogue and uses only the barest possible bones of a plot. And he praised its action sequences as well and called the climatic chase sequence unbelievably well sustained and stated that the special effects and stunts are spectacular, creating a frightening, sometimes disgusting, and to the truth be told, exhilarating effect. There's also been um, good reviews from <clears throat> even the New York Times, the Washington Post, and many others. So overall, from what I've seen of The Road Warrior, since I've only seen it just one time like its predecessor, I am going to say that this is just such a good film. If you like the first film, I think you're going to like this one just as much because this was even more action-packed and what have you. So overall, I think Mad Max 2 or The Road Warrior, whichever you like to refer to it as, is a very, very good action flick. <laughs> I like the direction George Miller gave, well, did for this. This also has score from Brian May. No, not the Brian May of Queen. And at, well, the natural Australian film composer, who of course, composed the score for this film's predecessor. For our cast, aside from Mel Gibson, who plays Mad Max, who's still very good, that I like his performance. Um, let's see. Bruce Spence played the gyro captain. He did pretty good uh, in that. Mike Preston played Papa Gala. Very good performance. Max Phipps played the Toady. Good character. Vernon Wells played Wes. Kel Nielsen played Lord Humongous. Yeah, pretty good. And Emil Minty played the Feral Kid. Yeah. And the supporting cast was real pretty good too. So so you know the cast is good too. So overall, I'd say Mad Max Two of the Road Warrior. Your, again, whichever you'd like to call it, don't mean to sound like a broken record, is not too bad. But would I recommend this film? I'd say hell yeah, go for it. <coughs> as I've said before, if you like the first film, you're going to like this one as well. I think you'll like this just as much, but you be the judge. Now again, I am going to review the sequels in the next two days. So what did you think of The Road Warrior or Mad Max 2? Let me know in the comments section below. If you like the video, click the like button, subscribe, and be a part of the Big D Nation. Continue to help support my channel, make, make the views grow, and, well, and you know this. Join me next time when I bring to you a review of Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, the third film. So if you like this, check out my reviews of these Mel Gibson sequels, and they are for his bigger franchise, the Lethal Weapon series. The upper left-hand corner is my review of Lethal Weapon 2 from 1989. The upper right-hand corner is my review of Lethal, Lethal Weapon 3 from 1992. And the bottom right-left-hand corner, excuse me, <coughs> is my review of Lethal Weapon 4 from 1998. Sorry, everyone. And the bottom right hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.